In Tonga, we have 169 islands, and 36 of them are inhabited. Most of the offshore islands is, uh, is about the remoteness uh, islands. Maybe four days to go there or spend uh, six hours to reach my boat. Then. It's not inhabited. My name is Tonga Tuyano. I am the OIC for Ministry of Fisheries uh, Pabau. And my role is looking after fisheries in Itmama. I've been out there in diving there and the variety and different species of fish that are live uh, in those islands. There's a big difference of the volcanic island compared to the, to the main island. There's some group of fishermen, they go there and fish for normally two days, some big occasion. In our data that we recorded that uh, most fish they, they caught in there is a uh, session fish, uh, lobster, then uh, parrot fish are dominated and catch. For Tongans, a healthy ocean means a place where there's a lot of fish. It gives them jobs, it provides them food and income. If there's a healthy ocean, it makes them heavier. My name is Seinika. I am the Special Management Area Lead here in Rawa'o. The distance and the remoteness for the volcanic islands is quite difficult for us to control. So we have never actually studied it or even involve them in any program here in Tonga. It's too far away. My name is Patrick Smallhorn West. I'm a marine scientist at James Cook University. My role is to help collect some of the data and information that the Tongan government needs to make decisions about their options. Today we're headed out to Latte Island, which is one of the volcanoes in the northern part of the country. It's about 30 or 40 nautical miles away from Vavao, and it'll take us 10 to 12 hours to get there. Uh, the goal of this trip is to start to collect data on the ecological significance of Tonga's volcanic arc. When I'm underwater, my job is to count fish and count corals. We swim along with a tape measure and count all of the large fish that we can see within a, a certain belt. Write down the number of fish we see, the species that we see, and the size of all the fish we see. And then we come back along that same area until we do what are called photo quadrats, where we take a one by one meter photo of the reef. And then later on, we can identify uh, what corals are on those areas and the health of those, those systems. Ultimately, all this data is fed back to the Tongan government and the Tongan Ministry of Fisheries so that leaders like Saini and Tonga can use them in their decision making. Tonga's volcanic islands are pretty diverse. Uh, they can look like all kinds of things. Some of them are your classic volcano coming out of the, the sea look where it's just flat water and then this triangle emerging from the ocean. while others are sort of low-lying with little chunks of rock that have sort of stuck up. Some of them are still smoking and then might subside down in a couple of months, who knows. And they're part of this ring of fire that goes all the way around the Pacific.
uh, last year, the 15th of January last year, this uh, big volcanic eruption eh, uh, exploded in Hungatonga, Huapai. The day I was here, I was in Wawa'u that day. What I hear is a, a loud bang. Before I was in a big island, but after the eruption, is uh, no more island. It's like a big bomb that's uh, dropping in Tonga. It's falling like a rain. It cover all the vehicle, all the houses were covered. And all around, rock was uh, a coastal area. Very scary. I never imagined when I go back to Tongatabo, I see the effect, the impact from the from the volcanic eruption. The eruption in 2022 proves just how active and dynamic this environment is. So what we've found over years of study now is that these islands are actually really distinct from mainland Tonga. So the fish species we're finding there are different. The coral assemblages are different. And the whole ecosystem is really kind of a unique uh, setting that you wouldn't find anywhere else in the country. The volcanic island is, uh, is more special. Eh? It was because of the, of the mountainous area and uh, fishery species in there. It's very important for Tonga culture. It's very, uh, very important to us. These islands are of global significance. To be listed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, there are 10 UNESCO World Heritage Area criteria, and they only have to satisfy one. These islands satisfy three. These islands are continuously being created and then abruptly destroyed. They represent major stages of Earth's history and are a place of ongoing geological processes. These islands are a living lab for understanding how life evolves and adapts to extreme environments. And how is life learned to cope with massive natural disturbances? And then how can these then provide us with lessons about our impact on the planet? And then lastly, this sea of islands has been used as a navigation aid by Polynesian voyagers for a thousand years. So the cultural values of these islands are also significant, not only to being Tongan, but also to the larger Pacific community and their shared history. If all of the volcanic islands like Latte become recognized by World Heritage, it's benefit the fisheries in Tonga like in terms of uh, resources, capacity building for, for staff, and also support our co-management for fisheries in Tonga. I think to manage the kind of area, we need bigger program for that. All those levels has to collaborate in order to make uh, Tonga fisheries management become more advanced. Tonga is really well known for the humpback whale migration that happens every year, but there's so much more to explore in the marine ecosystem. My favorite thing is the volcanic island, seeing the variety and different, uh, different species of fish. I love the men's stream because they are very colorful and they have the eyes that can rotate around. I'm so super proud to, to be part of this uh, kind of activity that we said. If we're all the international levels and then the governments, communities, all of Tonga, they work together. We'll make our people prosper in life. Oh, <laughs> 
Allah. 